Hey there guys, if you want to support the channel and get access to our exclusive Discord community of Ruler School, which provides uh, tons of great community content, including exclusive game nights, uh, giveaways, and tournaments, go ahead and check out the link down below and consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thank you guys so much, and enjoy the video. Hey there guys, DM073 here, bringing you the commentary for a feature match that's more kind of of a combo reel, uh, kind of a highlight of the deck that I'm going to be playing. Um, Thomas uh, was playing a Prissia aggro list, um, pretty kind of standard, he threw in a lot more burn because he tends to like burn a little bit more, but I am playing the deck that I really wanted to look at, which is the Green Dragon Windy OTK list. This was sent to me by my friend Ryan Lilly, and it is a very, very interesting and fun list. Um, it's definitely got a lot more uh, answers kind of pieces to it than the Alhamad OTK from back when um, our regalia were still around, but it can still, if your opponent isn't ready for it, just deal 40 damage at a, or more out of nowhere, even on as early as turn two, um, which is pretty interesting. So I'll be seeing if I can try and pull it off. And I'll explain how it goes if it happens to go off. So my first turn, I get that Prissia's Memoria and play my Windy, um, which is my first combo piece. So it's already looking pretty good. It's just a matter of Thomas, who's never played against the deck, to see if he makes the right call to answer the Wendy. And he does, actually. He plays the Thunder here to kill the Wendy, which is probably the smartest call. Um, if he had played the Sylvia and swung in, he actually would have died next turn, um, because I have the Cheshire Cat's assistance in hand. I get another Prissia's Memory there. I choose not to pay the three life. I play out a Puss in Boots here. Um, unfortunately, now that I've lost my Wendy, I need to try to either draw into another Wendy or just push forward with a lot of damage through Puss in Boots and my other one-drop Fairy Tales, so it's just a matter of seeing if that can happen. He actually uses his inheritance coin there on Divine Bird to try and draw into another card. Happens to draw into another Thunder, which is great for him. Um, gets that second stone. Now he plays the Sylvia and swings, making my Puss in Boots not able to block, taking me down to 3,100 life already. Goes to my turn. Before I swing anywhere I'm just, or tap for stone, I'm going to go ahead and just kill that Sylvia outright with the 7-7 seven, seven Puss in Boots. Play my two red uh, red riding hood and another puss in boots here hopefully getting something good i get a five five puss in boots which is not ideal call for stone get another prissy's memoria choose not to pay for it letting the puss in boots that i've already tapped be able to produce any will this turn Again, I am putting a lot of aggression here on the board, so I'm not terribly concerned about missing out on the OTK here. Um, but I know that Prissia can just explode out of nowhere based on how he goes, and I know he plays Mariabella, so if he gets too far ahead, um, it's just not going to work out really well for me. Plays that Wind Secluded Refuge, which I don't care about. I have nothing that targets his board at all, um, just helps him draw a card. Uh, and then he decides to actually tap for stone and then use that stone on the 5 5 Puss in Boots to go ahead and kill it. Um, I'm not necessarily sure if that was the right call, um, just like he can just kind of be pay more patient with it. I'm not really pushing, like there's not really much I could probably do with it. Maybe he's worried about a fairer's spell or something like that to cancel it. Um, and so he just wants to get it out of the way now while I'm tapping out. Call for stone after playing the Red Riding Hood. Um, make it so that my Puss in Boots can produce any color. Play Cheshire Cat's Assistant. Get unlucky and flip over another Cheshire Cat's Assistant. So I'm just going to poke him for uh, this uh, 7 damage off the uh, Red Riding Hood. Hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt me. I am sitting with uh, three seven sevens on the field right now, which is pretty good. Um, but you know, if again, if a Mary Bella comes down, he could maybe answer one, or if he has, you know, thunders or arrow traps plus something else, or lots of different things that he could potentially have. He plays his own Red Riding Hood here, which is a little bit weaker than mine because I have more wind stones. Call for stone again. I'm gonna go ahead and give uh, Puss in Boots the resonance trigger because. Um, the Wendy's are now, or the Red Riding Hoods are now stronger. Play that Cheshire Cat Assistant again. Hit Kagiya's Moonbeam Butterfly. And play the Kagiya's Moonbeam Butterfly where X equals zero. So I get to go in and grab a one drop out of my deck. At this point, there's really not much sense to grab the um, Wendy for the OTK, so I might as well try and consider grabbing the most damage as possible, um, which is why I actually decide to go for thinking about a Treasure Cat to draw power, but then I decide to go with a uh, Tinkerbell instead, just because um, that's a 9, at this point it's another 7-7, seven, seven, but this time it's in the air. Um, 
So I have two 7-7s, seven one of them in the air, one of them on the ground, and then my Red Riding Hoods are 8-8s, so I can just put in a lot of damage here. Red Riding Hood swings, and then he decides to take that damage. Red Riding Hood swings in again, takes another 8, so just like that, 16 damage, taking him down to uh, 17. Or, yeah, 17. There's, here comes that Mariabella. He gets to go grab a Windstone. He starts to do things kind of out of order here, and I kind of, you know, remind him, like, hey, wait, you got to resolve Mariabella first. Get the Wind Basic Stone. So he'll get a Breeze Counter on Mariabella. Then he can call for Stone and get a Breeze and a Blast Counter. At this point, it's not looking good for me, and I'm actually really glad I went for the uh, Tinkerbell instead of the... Um, Wendy, because he could just use Mariabella to just kill the Wendy right outright. Uses the um, Fiery Fox to try and draw a card and cycle a stone, which will get him more Breeze and Blast counters here on Mariabella. At this point, he could kill two of my guys, or one of my guys, just with Mariabella. And especially if he decides to, like, if he decides to swing, he could just kill both my Red Riding Hoods just with his Mariabella, which would be really bad for me. S decides to swing for the 10 at me, which takes me down to 2100. Pretty interesting decision there. Uh, and then swings at me again with the Red Riding Hood. which hits me for another nine. So, yeah. Drop for turn. I actually have an opportunity to get lethal here. I definitely have lethal on board. He's got no blockers, and at best he can kill one of my creatures um, just with the Mariabella. So I'm actually in a pretty decent shape, especially since if I call for stone, both of those red riding hoods become nine nines. Um, and that's just, just by themselves, that's enough damage. Um, so I actually play the Kage's Moonbeam Butterfly here. Tinkerbell. So now I have uh, both my Tinkerbells are now 9 9 flyers. Call for stone, give resonance to the uh, Tinker, uh, to the Puss in Boots, which I think is my one biggest misplay here. Um, because again, at this point, if I had just kept, um, if I had not played that, I would have had enough damage on board. He would have, couldn't have possibly dealt with everything. Um, even with the Mariabella, and I just can kill him. So I'm trying to swing for 11 here with the Tinkerbell. He happens to have the um, Arrow Trap, which is unfortunate. Banish the stone to try to draw a card, and then unfortunately I realize I can't push through for the rest of the damage because of my miscalculation, and because uh, I know that he's got the Mariabella to kill one of my Red Riding Hoods, so I just move on from there. And then he can just crack back and kill me, so... Going into the second game here, I am again choosing to go on the play. It is the best chance the deck has to be able to do the combo off. Hopefully he doesn't draw into Thunder or an instant speedway to kill my Wendy's. calling for my first stone. This is actually the stone that I want to see the most in this game. Turn one, it's the only stone that isn't a wind stone, um, but it still produces light. So now this way, every single stone for the rest of the game is going to do resonance, which I need for Wendy. So I'll put out that um, Puss in Boots just to have something. Um, and he's actually going to double burn me here with, uh, which I think is interesting. He deals a thousand damage just to me with uh, those two spells. Um, I'm not quite sure if that was the right play, especially since he knows that Wendy's a Thing, unless he I didn't he didn't really see the combo so maybe he just wasn't really thinking about it and he's not really worried about a 2-2 two, two. I'm gonna go ahead and pay the 300 life here uh, mainly because I want to kind of make a, a play 
essentially. Um, I'm going to use Flute's Awakening to try to draw a card with the Puss in Boots, which will then let it recover, because I'll produce blue with the Puss in Boots. Um, and then I'll use Puss in Boots and one, or I'll, actually I'll just pay the two with my stones to play Kage's Moonbeam Butterfly. Should have done the Kage's Moonbeam Butterfly first, just in case he didn't, ha he had Severing in his hand. Um, he might have Severing in his hand anyway and just chose not to use it, which I think is odd. But then again, he could save the Severing, f yeah, there it is, Severing. He could save the Severing for when the combo tries to happen. Uh, and then I'm going to use Chess, um the Puss in Boots to play a Cheshire Cat to try to get some more draw power as well as having a potential blocker and another fairy tale to help kind of combo off with. Calls his second stone, gets a Prisius Memoria. Chooses to play the Sylvia. Swings at me for six. I can't block, um, so I'm going to go down to 21. Draw for turn. Now, because he um, let my Windy survive and everything else, I actually get to combo off here, which is pretty sweet. So for the Windstone Resonance off the Elf Stone, uh, the, or the Gill Structure Deck Stone, it counts as a win. So Windy can become a um, can become my you know Resonance Caster. Uh, I'll pay one for um, Green to play. Uh, Red Riding Hood, which will then let me untap Windy, uh, and then every one drop fairy tale that I flip over actually now I can cast with Windy uh, and then just let Windy recover. Um, and I have another fairy tale in hand uh, that's a one drop that I can cast with green or white, which is great. So now I'm completely, I'm immune to if he decides to Severing Winds the cast. Also, Flute's Awakening is great with Wendy because then I can pay blue, recover her, uh, draw a card, and then just keep going. Um, so fill my hand up with stuff. So all of these one-drop fairy tales just get to come out for free. Uh, I decided to use Kage's Moonbeam Butterfly to cast, you know, X again. Cast a Tinkerbell, so I recover. Every fairy tale comes in and recovers Wendy, who then gets to tap for more will. So just every one-drop fairy tale is essentially free, provided he that chooses not to use that uh, Chesh that severing winds. I'll banish the Spirit Caller Stone to draw that Cheshire Cat's assistant, so I can keep going. Um, Play the Red Riding Hood, play the Tinkerbell, hit a Fairy Tale Library of Alexandria. I start to go to cast it, and then I go, wait a minute, I can get some more Fairy Tales on here, because I have them in my hand at this point. Um, I'll play the t uh, Puss in Boots and the Puss in Boots off of the Fairy Tale Wendy, and then I can play the Fairy Tale Library. Now, if Thomas really wanted to mess with me here, he could then tap uh, his sever he could cast his severing winds to stop the fairy tale library. The problem is, though, at that point, my Tinkerbells are 29 29s, uh, and he only has two stones, so and they're both flying. So there's literally nothing in his deck that can deal with the board that I've just established. So he's just like, well, I'm just going to accept defeat then. Um, so all of these fairy tales, because the fairy tale library is out of Alexandria, are now going to have swiftness, including those Tinkerbells, uh, and I have 14 other fairy tales. So they're 29 29s, and they just swing in the air for a bajillion damage. Uh, and we move on to game three. Once he chooses to take the draw again, probably because he wants to be able to possibly thunder me during the upkeep. Uh, I have a handful of, unfortunately, lots of blue cards, even after mulliganing five, which is not good when there's no Wendy. Um, I'll play this Puss in Boots again, who is just a 3-3, three, three, uh, and then pass the turn. So the problem is with no Wendy, those blue cards are really costly because I have to tap my creature and I can't untap it to try to draw cards. He's gonna energize into that Fiery Fox. Do have a Wendy here, which is nice. Play one, play Wendy. Call a stone, resonance after paying three life to make my um, Puss in Boots better. I can use him for a stone, and I do have that Kage's Moonbeam Butterfly. I know he has the Thunders, and I know he's seen the OTK at this point. So I'm like, well, how to protect from Thunders? I'll go ahead and draw a card, see if I can maybe bait out a Severing Winds with the Flute's Awakening. Wasn't planning on swinging with it anyway. Do it again. Um, 
and then I'll cast uh, Kagi's Moonbeam Butterfly to bring out another Windy. So my thought is, unless he has double thunder, uh, having two Windies means that I'm pretty safe. And I'll be able to pull off the OTK, especially since I have Cheshire Cat's Assistant in my hand. I'm like, okay, I just need these cards so that I can, you know, make sure to get the Resonance off. Now he could just be smart and save the Thunder for when I target something with Resonance. That's definitely a way to disrupt this deck. As soon as I give one of the Wendy's a target, he just kills it. Um, but at the same time, if he just kills all the Wendy's, it also just makes the deck really, really struggle. And unfortunately for me, as you can see in his hand, he has double thunder. So both of those Wendy's are just gonna die. Uh, and now I'm stuck with a handful of blue and red cards and no way to cast them because the deck's stone base is 100% white green. Um, and then just uses resonance to get those other colors specifically with Wendy. So I'm gonna kinda save you the time here and just say that the uh, this match does not end well. Um, I never really establish here and you're seeing kind of the, the downfall of this deck with its stone base. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of talk about the deck while this plays out. Because um, what happens here is Thomas just continues to amass a board of fiery foxes. Uh, and then I do, there's just nothing I can do because Puss in Boots is the only thing I can use to produce red or blue and my hands full of red and blue stuff. Um, so I'm just sitting dead in the water. Um, so the whole idea of the deck is just to say, hey, I've got a Windy, um, I'm going to make it be able to tap for any color and then play my whole deck in one turn, just kind of like the Al Hamado TK deck. Um, the thing is, this deck is much more vulnerable, one to Severing Winds. Um, if you can Severing Winds their uh, casting of a Fairy Tale after they cast Cheshire Cat's Assistant, um, then Wendy won't recover and they just waste the combo, so that's one way to stop it. Two is, again, once we try to target... Um, Wendy for resonance, you just thunder Wendy, which is really great. Um, you can also just thunder Wendy um, after we try to play that first fairy tale. So like we've wasted a treasure cat's assistant, we try to play a fairy tale to recover her, and then in response to the fairy tale cast, you just thunder Wendy, so then she's dead. So then we're completely tapped out for the turn. We've wasted a treasure cat's assistant, and um, we don't. We just have a one drop fairy tale on the board. Um, you know, things like that. Also, decks such as things that run Mariabella uh, or can instant, you know, deal with stuff like that is just an, in pretty much an auto loss for this deck, as well as Kirik. Um, Kirik Ririk. Uh, pretty much Kirik Ririk just has to survive till turn three. If he does judgment um, with those all those counters that he gets on him, uh, the deck just dies because you have like so many thunders and there's just no way I can get through it. And the deck has zero J Ruler hate and the deck has zero answers to anything your opponent plays on their turn. It's literally just, hey, can I combo off before you can establish a board? No? Okay, I lose. Um, overall, super fun deck to play. I definitely recommend, you know, giving it a try just as like a joke. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure it has any real competitive place, um, but it is silly to just play a bajillion one-drop fairy tales. So if the deck list for it will be up this Saturday, uh, either Friday or Saturday, um, based on which day I decide to do the spoiler coverage for the week. Uh, I know that they've been doing four cards a day for um, Advent of the Demon King, um, so I'm going to go ahead and do it a full spoiler, uh, kind of one video to cover the week at the end of the week, so be on the lookout for that. And again, huge thanks to Thomas for playing this and to my buddy Ryan Lilly for sending me this list. I hope you guys like it, and if you guys want to see more silly combos like this on the channel in the future, let me know, or, or I'll just go back to trying to play um, kind of more... Uh, thematic decks there and he plays the Mary Bella with three fiery foxes and I just scoop it up like I said so until next time guys this is TMO 73 signing off